We've got another MSR on deck today, and this one just happens to literally be a cyborg. Good afternoon morning and welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, I'm Reese of the Four Piece Variety, a Wookiee Triple XL. And we've got the A12 VF edition, the 4068 gig limited wattage, 12650H, 16 gig RAM, having 512 gig NVMe, sporting 15 inch laptop with a 1080p 144Hz monitor. It's got a spec that would be attractive to a lot of people looking to do some pretty impressive processing power with some light gaming on the side and actually not that light because of things like DLSS3 now performing the way they do this thing can even handle AAA pretty handily but before we get too ahead of ourselves let's go through what's in the box well you get a laptop obviously and you get a charger and that's pretty much it there's no real like amazing levels of add-ons because this is it's structured to be an entry-level notebook but what's not entry-level is the finish that they've done on there the, for, starting from the top you've got a pinhole microphone array setup with a 720p webcam which we'll give you a quick demo of right now and we're live with a quick camera and mic test we're not expecting it to be amazing in any front like that but it's actually got pretty decent aperture control the brightness and stuff does tend to a little bit i don't think you're going to be able to stream off of this but if you've got to do a quick meeting on skype and someone wants to see your face and need to be able to hear you then at least it's got that built into it I'm just using the intel array microphone and i have processed both of them through nvidia broadcast because hey if you've got an nvidia graphics card you really should be using it back to the studio underneath that is the 1080p 144 hertz monitor it's average it's an 8-bit panel on, on the spec and it gives pretty decent color reproduction it's not really design leveled or focused and the output is i would say a little bit undersaturated and because this is using nvidia optimus we unfortunately can't access the nvidia control panel to just give it that little bit of acceleration and the msi true color palette is also not available on this unit it's something that i think it's just a little software tweak that i think that they should have put into this i don't know the limitations around that uh, maybe you guys can let me know in the comments down below but it, having used it on other notebooks, I really would have liked to have seen that on this version. Then we have the keyboard and the touchpad, which are exceptional. And using this makes, the, or using this notebook, th this makes it a lot better, honestly. Especially this really, really big multi-touch touchpad. It's absolutely fantastic. And I like the way they're carrying through this kind of see-through kind of smoke plastic effect that they've got over here on the WASD and on the power button it's also nice to have a numpad on a on a notebook like this because the, like i said this is more like a work life slash gaming than a gaming slash work life type of setup as far as ports go we've got what i would call enough on the left hand side you're going to see the kensington lock with the big cooling vent next to it then with a usb type a and then your headphone jack which is a combi port so it can take three in ones or just general stereo headsets then on the right hand side you've got the power the lan the hdmi the display port capable thunderbolt port or type c port in this instance and then another type a as well as a little battery indicator over there and more just more and more and more of the smoked plastic effect for cooling they've done a little bit of a different setup as well it's all coming out the one side it's actually a little bit of an older type setup but it allows them to keep the notebook extra thin and light uh, so you're going to see on the, the back left corner of the notebook is where all of the heat and stuff is going to be coming out on that side over there now the underside as well is pretty interesting there is a lot of clearance over there for the fans the entire msi true gaming is basically open where you can see those dark areas it's completely open over there to allow the air to get in and breathe as much as humanly possible to try and get, once again keep that heat down you're also going to notice on either side at the bottom these holes then for the speakers and then the rubberized feet in each corner just to give it that little bit of elevation so that it doesn't then sit directly on top of the desk and then the air can then once again flow through the notebook I have to say this very unique look and feel is a big draw for me on this notebook and it does set itself apart as something a little bit unique but doesn't scream gaming which is actually better because like I say the way that they've set this up for its performance has really been 
it's set up as a work slash gaming life. And we see that with the 12650H giving us absolutely incredible Cinebench performance. Not only is it considerably faster than previous gen in single core, it thumps like a first gen 8 core AMD. So with a lot less wattage, obviously. So yeah, it's got the goods as far as processing power goes. It's absolutely no slouch over there. And with gaming, because of the 4060, because it's got DLSS 3, even with the 45 watt limited profile that it has, which is really about heat generation and battery life, etc., it really does still give pretty good performance. If you're going to look at something like Vermintide or Dota 2, you're probably going to get, you know, almost that 144 hertz or better than that 144 hertz refresh rate. So it's going to give you a really, really nice feel for older and esports kinds of of titles but when we look at current AAA gaming like cyberpunk even it gave 45 frames and that was just on an rt low type of setting without any tweaking with a couple more tweaks you're going to get 60 fps and i saw the exact same thing in metro with a 57 average which is not easy to get it wasn't on the extreme profile uh, we're not expecting it to with a 4060 to get to an extreme profile kind of level but with the 8 gig video memory now compared to the previous gen even the 3050 ti only had four gigs of four gigs worth of vram which really did limit it so now with the eight gigs of video memory on the 40 series uh, for notebook it's quite a nice upgrade because you're just getting much higher texture resolution output connectivity was also really good the lan was or the wi-fi actually was as fast as the lan pretty much which was pretty good the only thing that was a little bit concerning that i saw from this performance was was in the storage once the storage hit 80 percent of its capacity my first tests on the crystal disk mark didn't look as good as when i just made a little bit of extra space and then i ran them again and then it was considerably better so the storage on these units is going to top out its performance at an 80 percent full rate on this drive so try and keep it underneath that in order to make sure that you keep the same kind of performance the battery test as well was what i would call average for this kind of size and weight it gave me just over four hours worth of continuous video playback but it charged up really quickly after that so battery charging on this is pretty good and because of four and that's i mean there was 4k uh, you know ultra hd video playback if you were doing like web browsing and stuff you could probably get about seven seven and a half hours worth of normal working and web browsing time it also has no slouch on the battery from a streaming perspective and i managed to stream 4k back on battery absolutely no problems so tldr for the cyborg a12 vf is going to be that exactly like i said it's mostly like a working laptop that has some gaming capabilities if you were to use this for design on the go you are probably actually going to be limited by the panel more so than the rest of the performance if you can output to a high end like ips panel to do your design and stuff on the go and do your color reproductions etc on that or if you have access to some color grading for this panel then that would probably bring it in line i would say the saturation is a little bit low and i would have liked to have access to that control just to tweak that somewhat the rest of the performance and the cooling and stuff is in line it's once again got one of my absolute favorite buttons which is the cooler boost which i just throw it on yeah instant extra performance which is really really nice to have the msi center as well in the software it runs as we expect from just general you've got all of your base stuff on the front page there with your cpu and your gpu temperature and your usage so you can track and see if there is something anomalous in the system it's got easy updates as well so if you just need a live update all of your drivers etc the MSI Center has become a pretty solid piece of software. I actually saw another review where they complained about the software, which is a bit weird to me because MSI Center is like super solid these days. I've got to say it's some of the better software that I run into on a daily basis. And look and feel wise, physically, this has to be one of the coolest looking notebooks I've seen from MSI. Um, I do feel, however, the limited wattage on the 4060 is going to probably hurt them in the gaming space somewhat because if you look at like Firestruck and Time Spy, the averages that it was pulling out were lower 
than other units of similar spec because of that limited wattage. So it can't boost as high. It has a 120 watt brick as well. And it's really been set up as more of a mobility product than a hardcore gaming mobility product. It's mobility first and gaming second. So an interesting angle. It is going to work for some people. And like I say, it's one of the thinnest and lightest notebooks you're going to find uh, in this sort of spec. And the, like I say, the finish on this is just astronomically nice and good uh, it's one of my favorite looking devices i'd have to say out of the box i would like to see a slightly higher performance version of this maybe like a cyborg 16 maybe msi it's a little bit thicker has the dual vent type of setup uh, just increase that cooling performance so that we could get an unlocked wattage 40 60 8 gig in this but for this review that is all i have for you on the cyborg a12 vf if you have enjoyed this please do hit us up with a like and subscribe and i will see you on the flip side